Good morning. My name is Eric Lyons. I'm Arachi. I'm Connor Joyce. If you will indulge us for a few minutes, we'd like to talk to you about the Nurse Family Partnership. The Nurse Family Partnership is a nonprofit organization that strives to empower first time mothers. They send specially trained nurses to make home visits to support and educate mothers during pregnancy and newborns' early childhood. Currently, there are over 34,000 families that receive Nurse Family Partnership support in over 40 states. Since 1996, over 280,000 families have received services from the Nurse Family Partnership. Now, they have an aggressive plan to scale. They plan to double enrollment in the next seven years. Connor will talk to you more about the case itself and our methodology we use to analyze the data. So we took a six-step approach in trying to resolve this case, each of which I'll go into more detail. But what we found was a new way of evaluating cases based on difficulty, which we will term the case equivalent. So we started off with a, of the prompt of saying, evaluating 25 cases per month that a nurse should have. So in other words, they should have 25 clients that they're servicing per month. And we were asked to evaluate if that number is correct. And so what we started by doing is taking the, the amount of cases that a nurse has and aggregating that by making the average of how many clients they have per month. With that, we, only, we found that there was only 10% that were above that threshold, with the rest of the 90% being either at or below 25 cases. So we compared these two groups, and we didn't find any significant differences between the two. And so that led us to speculate, what is causing that? What, what is missing from this analysis? And we speculated that it was difficulty. That one client may have a nurse, or one nurse may have a client that is constantly in need of help, has little education and little, no employment, and is really concerned about their pregnancy. But on the other hand, you'll have a nurse who has a client that she only has to visit once or twice, it's someone who's gainfully employed and has a bachelor's degree, but is just looking for a little bit of extra assistance in their, their household. And so there was no way of capturing that difficulty in this analysis, and so we set out to devise a way to do that. And the approach that we took was to build a risk and an outcome indicator. The outcome is whether or not the case was successful, and the risk is, what is how likely is it to have a negative outcome. To build the outcome variable, we used a mixture of pre-identified characteristics that the Nurse Family Partnership had shown us, mixed with a series of clusters analysis that, cluster analyses that we ran and took the results from. The final outcome was a mixture of both positive outcomes, such as initiating breastfeeding, and negative outcomes, such as if a child wound up being born premature or in the critical care unit. So now we had a way of evaluating if a case was successful or not. So we plotted the, or we clustered the cases based on this outcome variable and then assessed the risk variables that led to whether or not it was a good case. And again, we were left with variables that both were either risk indicators, such as if the parent was, a substance, was uh, abusing substances, or risk mitigators, such as if the parent identified that there was a need for food in their family, but then went out and found food stamps or other sort of food assistance. So we're left again with these two variables, risk, which showed how likely of a negative case, and then actually being able to assess if it was a negative or positive outcome. But that wasn't all of it. We knew that there were some variables that were missing. And so we set out and ran multiple different analyses to try to find what other mediating variables there were. And the first one that we found was phase. As, as you can see by this graph, a plurality of the risk falls in the pregnancy phase, followed by infancy, followed by toddlerhood. Now, it's not that significant effect of an effect, which we'll show later in the numbers, but, uh, but there was still a big enough effect that we wanted to include it. The second mediating variable was site. And so we started by looking at the different states, and we found that states like Alaska have a much higher risk than states like Florida and Alabama. And so we dove further into those states, and we found even more diversity among the sites within it. And this is because of factors like how frequently that the nurses meet with supervisors, what is the level of turnover at those sites, and, and so we knew there was something there. 
And so we built two formulas to be able to add weights to those, which will be included in our final equation. So you can see, as I said, the phase wasn't that big of an effect, but it was enough where we wanted to include it. Where agency actually did have a much more significant effect, where the, the sites that had the highest turnover and the least amount of supervisor meetings had some of the highest levels of risk. We also went back to the original risk equation and we added weights behind that, which had the biggest weights because it was our main way of uh, gauging difficulty. And that yielded our final way of evaluating risk, which was the risk, or of difficulty, which was risk times phase times the agency. And it could either be the lowest risk was 0.95 for those easiest cases, and the highest level of difficulty was 1.6. So we ran that analysis on all of our cases and then we were able to re-aggregate the data so we could have case equivalent by month by nurse. So we could see that, that uh, new way of evaluating those cases. And then we ran a critical point analysis to see at what point does the case threshold, case equivalent threshold pass where the outcomes plummet. And we found that to be 26. So 26 case equivalents, nurse outcomes or the client outcomes would begin to drop. But since we had created this new way of evaluating risk, we were also able to find what the average level of difficulty that a nurse should have. And we found that to be 1.11. So not only do we know that it should be around 26 case equivalents, but that nurses should also have a good combination of both high risk and low risk cases. So when we validated this, we had a little bit of a smaller sample size, but we found practically the same results. And then we took our validation one step further to really try to intuitively check if this was going in the right direction. And so we looked at the reasons for dismissals, which was a categorical variable, and we found that the intuitively positive uh, outcomes, such as if the child reached their, an age where they were no longer eligible, or if the parent graduated from the program, those showed significantly less risk with the variable that we had created for both the training and the validation set compared to those intuitively negative outcomes, such as if the parents or the infant died, which had shown that they would have much, a, much of a higher risk indicator. But we wanted to make sure that the nurse family partnership left with something tangible, something that they could learn about today and then enact tomorrow. And so we built this simple prototype to just show how easy it is to build a system to calculate the difficulty per case, which then could be calculated for all nurses and, and be implemented soon. But we also know that nurses, they don't always have the time to learn about this whole formula behind things. And so we use the design thinking tool of personas to create both high risk and low risk personas to really make it so it's it, to add that sentimental value so a nurse could quickly talk to somebody, know their education and their employment status, and then be able to determine if they think that they're high risk or low risk cases. So that being said, I'm gonna hand it over to Mara who's gonna share where we see this product going in the future. Thank you, Connor. And based on the simplicity of our model, we have many opportunities to expand. First, based on ideal case equivalents, various levels of nurses could be identified and paid differently. Secondly, our, our current model does not include nurse specialization. We do recommend this because this will reduce the rate of difficulty as nurses will be matched with the right cases. And our current model only factors in full-time nurses. However, this could be opened up to a more diverse set of roles, such as part-time nurses and home nurse aides. Also, we propose that support groups be created across sites and across agencies that would be a source of motivation and decrease, increase client retention for high-risk cases and low-risk cases. So we really wanted to set out to make a holistic approach to this case, and so we, uh, taking our behavioral science background, we really took an interdisciplinary approach, a mixture of, of data science and design thinking, and, and we, uh, hope that, uh, we hope that we hope uh, that we that they'll be able to implement this case. So thank you very much. Have a good day.